you are progressing nicely now with your skill set of C-sharp, and it's time to dive in and learn about a very important feature of any programming language. After Boolean logic, which gave birth to the computer era, branching statements, such as if and else, gave birth to intelligent design. Introducing the ability to branch off our code to different outputs gives us the ability to make complex software. Very little code can be written without if and else statements and branching statements. They are the foundations of most coding. Let's dive into some code and learn about if and else statements. In the last lesson, we made use of the try parse method. This is good and it allows us to safely attempt to convert the user's text into a valid date. And if it is invalid, instead of our code crashing, we simply get a boolean result from the try parse method. However, we now need to do something different in our code if the parse fails and return a result if it succeeds. This is where the if and else statements will come in. We know now that this value succeeds boolean will be true if the parse succeeds. If that is the case, we should return the value. To do this, let's write an if statement. The if statement starts with the keyword if, and then open and close parentheses. Inside the parentheses is expected a Boolean result. We can type an expression directly inside of here that evaluates to a Boolean result or we can give it a variable, such as our succeeds variable. So let's do that. Now we open curly braces. Anything inside of these curly braces will run only if this statement evaluates to true. So it reads quite naturally, if this statement is true, then the code block here will execute. Otherwise, it will evaluate this as false and then move to the next line of code and never run the code inside of these curly braces. In here, if this is successful, we simply want to return the parsed date that contains the actual value. So we can type return parsed date. So right now our logic will say, ask the user for their date of birth try and parse the date of birth into a date time offset value. If it is successful, return the parse date. If it is not, this code is never run and the code step to this next line, which actually does exactly the same thing right now, which is to still return the parse date. Of course, the try parse method will still set this value on failure. If we open and close the parentheses, go over to the second parameter, and we can see that it says date time offset dot min value if the conversion fails. So simply, if this conversion fails, it will have the value min value, which is also the same as we set it by default. This is not ideal because we have asked the user for their date of birth. We don't want to be returning an invalid date time that the user has not entered, but right now this code flow returns the same value. Instead, we want to do something else if they enter an invalid date. So let's step back a moment and write some generic eval statements. In the main method, let's do the matrix test. Let's ask the user a question and read their answer. Now let's simply output two different statements based on that answer. We won't do any specific validation or protection. We will simply ask to check whether they have typed red, blue, or anything else. We can write the if statement like before. And output some text if they enter red. Now what if their answer was not red? And we want to check if it was blue. We could write another statement like this. And as usual, a great way to learn is to debug. Add a breakpoint to the if statement. Run the program with F5. Let's type red and press enter. 
step over this line with F10. And because we entered red, so this evaluates to true, notice the debugger now goes inside of this code block and outputs our message. We can see this in the console window. If we keep stepping over, we will notice the next statement is run. It checks the if statement for if the pill is blue. And because it is false, the code inside of the curly braces of that if statement do not run. So we have our logical branching going on, but only one way. If something is true, the code runs. And then again, if something is true, the code runs. We are doing too many checks here. As the first statement checks if the pill is red, and it is, then the second statement can never be true. The string cannot be both red and blue at the same time. So we are running this expression check, or possibly this expression check, for no reason. This is where else comes in. Else can be used, as the name suggests, to only run the expression condition if the previous if or else has evaluated to false. Let's change our second if statement and put the keyword else in front of the if. So now it says else if. Press F5 to run the code again. Type red and press enter. Press F10 to step over and notice that this code runs again as before. And the key point now is when we pressed F10 before on this line, it would jump to the next if statement here and evaluate this expression. Let's press F10 this time. And notice that this entire block, including the if statement and expression, was bypassed. This code never ran. This is an important thing to remember because when we get to classes, reference types, and null references, for example, knowing that if the check above succeeds, that the check below will never run, is important to prevent things like null reference exceptions. It is also more efficient to do than having superfluous double checks. So you might now ask, when would you use two if statements instead of an if and else statement? The answer is pretty simple based on what we have just learned. If the two statements could both be true at the same time, then we should use if statements. If there is only one possible outcome, then you should use an if else statement. Because the user can choose red or blue, but not both, there is only one outcome. So we will use the if else statement. But hold on, let's run our code once more. I'm going to enter purple. Let's step over the code. Notice the first check evaluates to false. So now the second if is evaluated. And that also fails. So now our program continues at the next line, effectively displaying no information to the user and carrying on as if nothing has happened. What do we do if we want to handle the unlimited number of possible answers from the user and present them with some kind of answer? Let's hope we don't have to write every possible combination of text and millions of if statements to cover every possible outcome. Thankfully, that is not the case. We can just add another statement below. This time, however, we are simply going to leave off the if. We are going to write else only and open and close the curly braces. There's no parentheses, no expression to evaluate. This means that if all the above checks of ifs and else ifs fail, then the final else statement will run. Inside here, let's display another message, telling the user they have to choose. Let's press F5 to run the program again, and enter purple. Press F10 to step over the two if and else if statements and notice the code then jumps straight to our else code block and outputs the code inside of this block. That's great. So hopefully you can see from this little test how powerful the if and else if statements are 
and this is just the basics of how to use them. Let's go back to our code now and think about the problem, and if the if else statements can solve this problem for us. Right now we ask the user for their date of birth. We check if it's valid, and if it is, we return the right value. If it's not, what do we do? We should really tell the user to enter it again until they enter a valid date, because our method is expected to return a date, and we only have two real options to do this successfully. We continue to ask the user indefinitely until we get the right answer, or we throw an exception to escape from our method. We will come to exception throwing and when we do that in a future lesson, but for now we want to create an infinite loop until the user enters a valid date. Using what we learned with the if else statements, let's see if we can solve this. Let's write else. And as you can see here now, the code obviously is exactly the same. If we are successful, return the date. If we fail, return the date. So instead, I'm going to do something different. Let's see if you can get your head around this bit of code. If we just output to the user, we did not enter a valid code. Notice our method name is red. Hovering over that, it tells us not all code paths return a value. The code path is the possible options this method can take. If we went through and debugged the code, you would see it would step onto this line, then this, 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 and this. And then here is where we would create a code path, as I have been calling them a branch. So if we got to this if statement and it was true, one path the code could take is into here. This path returns a value to the method. However, if that's false, the code path that the method takes goes into here. As we have no return here, and also if we continued after the else statement down to this bracket here, there is no return. This code path, which is a possible way the method could run, does not return anything because the method must return the value it's expecting or throw this is invalid code. If we compile with Control Shift and B, you can see it will not compile. We have to return a value. So we must return a value in this else statement. Here's what I'm going to do. Any ideas what you think is going on here? Let's break this down. You can see firstly compiling the code now succeeds and this will run. So what is happening? If the user enters the right date of birth, the code flows through here into the true and returns the correct date. If it fails, however, it flows through here, runs into here and then calls itself. So this return method wants to return the value that comes from the method. But this method is the method we are in. So what does the code do? Does it just jump back to the start of this method? Not quite. What we are doing here is calling this method again. A method can call itself not a problem. This is far beyond the knowledge of this lesson and what you have learned so far. However, let's just debug this for a moment so at least you get a taste of what's to come. Place a breakpoint in the else statement and run the code and enter an invalid date. Now press F10 to step over the console right line and see that we have now told the user you did not enter a valid date. Now let's press F11 to step inside of this call and you can see our code appears to have jumped back to the start of the ask for date of birth method. Our code has not just magically reversed itself and stepped back in time up to here. Instead, the current method that we were in has been pushed onto the call stack further down, and a new copy of this method is now at the top of the call stack. Once this method returns a value, it will return the method to the other ask for date of birth method that was called previously. 
check out the call stack window in the bottom right. We will cover this in future lessons, but the yellow arrow is where the code currently is and is symbolized by the yellow arrow in the editor. You can see above that is another call for ask for date of birth. And above that is the main method. Going from bottom to top is the order in which the code is executing and stepping down into methods. We will cover all this in future lessons, but just note this. I'm not going to go into depth about it, but watch what happens when we enter an invalid date over and over. So let's let this code run. It will simply continue to ask the user for the date of birth again. We enter an invalid date. The same logic runs. It's invalid and it calls the method again and asks for another date of birth and we enter invalid again. But look at the call stack now. We now have three calls to the same method and this is adding inwards over and over the method calling itself, then calling itself again and then calling itself again. For this reason, it is not a good way to solve the problem. The call stack is limited and eventually, if the user entered the date of birth wrong many times, the program would crash with the infamous stack overflow exception. Ever wonder why stack overflow is called what it's called? It's because it was a very common system crash in the 80s for programmers having recursive bugs and causing infinite loops in their code. Just to show you this, I'm going to stop the code and at the top of this method, simply return itself. Put a breakpoint here and press F5 to run the code. And if we just press F5 over and over, you can see every time we press F5, this method comes in, it calls itself, it goes to the start of the method, calls itself again, and we get effectively an infinite loop with this call stack increasing over time. If I remove this breakpoint and press F5, this program will continue to run over and over and over as fast as it can. And let's see what happens. Now you can see we get the stack overflow exception. And if we take a look at our call stack, we can see it's filled completely with the same call over and over. And at the bottom, the maximum number of stack frames supported has been exceeded. This is just visually inside of the call stack here. But there are many, many, many calls to the same method. There are thousands of calls. That is what would happen if the user manually entered the wrong data over and over. Anyway, I digress into future lessons here. Let's just leave our code as it is for now, as it works, and it forces the user to enter the right date of birth. Let's press F5 with no breakpoints and have a go. We can see it asks for a date of birth. I'm going to enter no. And you can see it then says, you did not enter a valid date and simply ask the question again. I can continue to type the wrong answer until eventually I enter a correct date. And the program then successfully finishes. Of course, we do nothing with this information yet, so it simply closes. But our program works, although we know there is a potential bug. But to fix this kind of recursive requirement that our method has, whereby we want to continue to ask the user until they enter the right date, we need a different kind of statement. We are going to solve that a different way in the next lesson.